Whew. How's it going today, guys? It's extremely windy today. So a lot of video is gonna be just filmed with a little music in the background. <clears throat> Not my really my forte. I really don't like doing that, but this wind is absolutely horrible. So if it calms down later today, maybe we'll get some good audio. I'm gonna have to move in the garage. So today we're gonna be building our H braces and running our, uh, our wire, our tension wire. And that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing today. So Friday, we're pulling wire. Today, we're running H braces. So hope the wind dies down because I'd hate to have to play music all the way through the video. All right, guys. All right, well, not just yet. You guys wanna see how big these turkeys are getting? Woo, they're making noises too. Oh, you're getting big. What's your big ones? You are getting big. Mm. The meat bird ones back there, huge. Yep. Oh yeah, you's a big one. <laughs> Before too long, we're gonna have to find these guys a new home. What's going on, girls? Whaling. Mac, what's going on, girls? How you doing, Whalen? I'm doing okay. You treating the new ones all right? How about you? You gonna talk to me? No. You guys keep it locked down tight in Jim Pop, don't you? Oh, they're coming out. Now right here is the original uh, post of the old fence. So even though I kicked it in this way, the old fence line falls this corner post diagonally. And then I kicked it back in this way because the original fence line veered off in that direction. So this is the closest point to the old property line or the old front fence line that I've came to. So to ensure that I'm staying within the the property line so let's get this measured out and build this brace up oh yeah and i set the old i set the old t-post right there and uh just so i knew positively this is where i was at so i didn't get off uh i think it's probably a little overkill but you never know with people uh, i like to not cause drama and keep good relationships but it would be a real bummer if uh, my neighbor contested this and made me take it down. So it is what it is. Uh, many of you might ask, well, why don't you just go talk to him? Well, I don't want to put any ideas in his head. That's why. So maybe this will give me some time to smooth things over. We can get along, drink beer or something, get over it. But the day, and the work must go on and I need this pin built. So, onward we go. I keep on setting this down. I forget. It's got a belt loop thing. Oh, where's my post? There it is. If y'all can hear me over this loud wind and cracking trees around me, I'm using these eight and a half inch screws to uh, anchor my my post here, or my cross post for my H brace. 
Uh, these are the ones I salvaged out of those pallets I uh, took apart. So that's pretty good. That's a score. You know, I didn't know what I'd use them for, but I kept them anyways. So freebie for me. Good enough for the girls I go with. And it all comes together. Well guys, it's been a long day and it's been really windy, really windy, but I've got almost all my tension wire ran on these uh, H braces. And the method that I'm using, I got from Deep Southern Homestead, and it's a real, real awesome way to get this tension wire ran for somebody who's an amateur, who's never done this before. It was super simple, and it seems to be pretty effective. And if you guys want to uh, check that out, it's his uh, tensile wire H bracing video that he has. Um, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I like to shout them out because it's a great idea actually. So check that out. Watch how I'm doing this. If you want the details, go check out his video. Cause like I said, I'm not a professional on this. It's probably, it's, it's something I learned from his channel. So check this out. I learned to do this so I stopped guessing at how much wire I'm using or I'm gonna need because I've been running out or using too much wasting. Then I'm bending the end so I can find it again later. That's something I uh, learned through air. Trial and error.
All you gotta do is bang the wire tight, keep on pulling it with your hammer, and then firm up your staple. All I gotta do now is take care of this excess wire. I've been wrapping it in through here and then twisting this up, get a little bit tighter. But I thought this was a pretty slick method for running this brace because there's a lot of contractions out there. A lot of them are expensive. Um, the ratchet system, man, that'd be primo to own that. But uh, it's a little expensive and I'm not holding any animals that big. So I think this is gonna work just right. Now I know there's a lot of people out there gonna critique me, say I did this or said I did that, but you know what? I'm holding goats, people. I'm not, I'm not holding horses or cattle or anything. I think this little simple fence is gonna do me just fine. I could have went with very large post and dug twice as deep, but it is what it is. And if I have to learn from my mistakes, then so be it. But for now, it's all I can do. There it is, folks. Finished product. Pretty tight. Effective and easy to do by yourself. Oh, I'm a little winded. Had one of my kids fall out of a tree. <laughs> Had a run all the way down to the property, make sure he's okay. Come to find out they were building a fort underneath a big, huge, rotten, dead tree they were climbing on. My boy fell out of it, kind of a blessing because they're building a fort and this whole big de dead tree is ready to come down right underneath of them where they're building their fort. So I showed them the danger, showed them the other danger, showed them what to look for, and then showed them how close they were to having that big tree fall on them. I just grabbed the tree. I mean, we're talking 16, 20 inch round dead cottonwood and pulled it down and it just crushed their fort down below. But we moved some logs around and they got a better fort now. So disaster averted. But what I wanted to show you guys or tell you is with this method that I'm using, that when you take a claw hammer or a crowbar and you're pulling this wire, this tensile wire, this slick wire, the only way it could grab onto it is by biting into it. Now, I ran into it twice where I had the wire snap. It just pulled apart. Could be just a weak spot in the wire, but it's definitely a downside of doing what I'm doing. Now, saying that, if you were to go with like horse wire, I think, and you had double the wire wrapped, you can grab a hold of it better, you probably wouldn't run into that issue. So next time, note it, enter it in the brain, a little food for thought, just saying. It's an issue I had, and I'd hate for you guys to run into the same thing because I told you so. Or because you guys watched the video and saw me using this wire, so horse wire. And to show that I'm not lying or making stuff up, it just happened to me. I was pulling this wire right here, and it snapped right inside my hammer. So. I wasn't joking. This stuff, it'll break if you're pulling on it. Now I gotta pull this, I gotta pull all this wire back out. Maybe I can salvage this, but now I gotta do it over again. So, food for thought. How was your fall? Good. See you next spring. <laughs> and the next episode, we're rolling fence. Now, that is gonna be a testament of how straight I got things and how well I did because running that fence is gonna be a bear. I can only imagine. I think I'm gonna roll it out in my long front yard in measured sections, pre-measured sections, and then make those rolls and then drag them up the hill and start tacking them down and pulling it tight. That's the only thing I can do when I'm by myself. 330 foot roll, that's a bear to manage by yourself, but it is what it is. So that's all I have for today and I hope you guys return for the next episode when we roll the fence out and see what kind of catastrophe we can run into. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>